Hello and welcome back everyone, Anth Wolf here with even more Star Wars The Old Republic, playing as Curse the Sith Juggernaut here on the prologue world of Korriban. We've been chosen, or it's been mentioned that we have been chosen by Darth Barris to be his acolyte, his apprentice, but we need to undergo our final trial in the tomb of Nagasado and obtain a special lightsaber. To get there though, we need to bypass some traps and learn where the entrance is from a prisoner, a Twi'lek, here in the Sith Academy. So, that's exactly what we're going to do. It would be nice to finally get a lightsaber because this war blade clipping into my back is really annoying. I mean, I do have a lightsaber in my possession, but I've been loath to equip it until we actually got to the point where we received our lightsaber properly. Uh. Ouch! Give it a rest, will ya? I'm getting my fill of fun while I still can, slave. Uh, as if on cue, look who's back. Word is you might become Lord Barris's apprentice. Uh, nice work if you can get it. So, I hear you'll be relieving me of this Twi'lek. She's a pain in the neck. Ha! <laughs> who's a pain in the neck? I'm the one wearing a shock collar. Huh. Consider that a going away present, Twi'lek. Seems you might be useful for something after all. This bruiser is taking you into the tomb where we caught you. None of you can figure out how to activate the tomb statues to open the Forbidden Cavern, huh? You got some kind of business in that secret Sith chamber, do you? Yes, and I'd appreciate your help. Don't bother being pleasant. Here, kid. Take the shock control color. I'll set it to a high level. Use it enough, she'll show you the back door to her mother's house. I suppose I can play tomb tour guide. A lot of work went into cracking that nut, but I did it once. I can do it again. So we're clear. I'm officially on strike when it comes to domestic duties. You will do everything I require, and I mean everything. Don't get any twisted ideas in that sithy head of yours. Lead the way. I'll show you the unlocking points throughout the tomb, and then open the secret door for you. All better. And now we have our first companion. Hmm. Let's look at our companions. We don't have any crew skills as of yet. We do need to go to the Imperial Fleet, but we have Vet here. We can learn about her biography if we so wish. And we can learn about her likes and dislikes in terms of how she may respond positively and negatively in our conversations with her and with others. Either way, even if she dislikes what we say or do, we will gain influence with Vet and maybe later our other companions. The higher the rank of the companion, the more effective they are. Uh, will it tell us? Yeah. When they're summoned, they'll have an increase in their presence, time efficiency for when you send them on crew skills, and a chance that they'll get a better reward when they're doing said crew skill as well. Presence is important because it affects your companion's overall health, how much damage they deal and how much health they can heal as well. It used to be the case that companions would have two like advanced classes, two disciplines they could do. Uh, Vet was only a damage dealer to be honest with you. But now, all companions can be a healer, a tank, or a DPS, and their skills are just appropriately. You know what, I'm quite happy for Vet to be a damage dealer for now. Later on, though, we may just want her to focus on healing. Especially for maybe when we're doing heroic missions. Either way, let's get on our way to the tomb of Nagasado.
Hmm. The dark side is victorious. That is something in terms of... It's not really of interest to us until we're, I think, level 60 plus, maybe level 65 plus. When the dark or the light side is victorious, you gain a bonus to your command points, I believe it is, which are used for a... something later on, I think called uprisings in the later expansions. Not something we really have any interest in right now. Acolyte. May I speak to you for a moment? Sure, why not, Sentry? Go ahead. Thank you. I'm honored that you would do me the courtesy. There was another acolyte, not long ago, who entered this tomb and did not come back. He... he died in there. Tell me how he died. I don't know, but I could tell he was dying. I heard him scream, even through the great tomb doors. The acolyte who went in there, he... he was a good sort. Friendly and talkative. He said he was entering the tomb to prove himself to his father. I just thought it would be nice if somebody took his body back and told his father he didn't make it. So go do it already, you useless woman. I'd never survive in there. And even if I did, I wouldn't be allowed to see his father. He is a Dark Honor Guard stationed in the Academy. None but Sith can ever set foot on the sacred ground where he stands watch. But you could find the body and bring it to his father. Please do this and honor the Fallen. I will take care of that. Thank you so much. If you find the Acolyte's remains inside the tomb, let me know. I can tell you where to find his father in the Academy. Good luck. Ah. <sighs> Out of all the acolytes on the way to this tomb, she had to ask us. The acolytes and the apprentices in here aren't really much of a challenge. Yep, just like I left it, this place is still ultra creepy. <laughs> So yeah, welcome to the tomb of Nagasado. We have a interesting creature we could speak to. He is not really of interest to me though. The acolytes remains here on the other hand are. He didn't get very far into the tomb, did he? badly in there. Oh, he was so brave and ready to prove himself to his father. His father is, was, Naaman Fall. As I said before, he's one of the Dark Honor Guards in the Academy. If you take the Acolyte's remains to his father, I'm sure he'll be grateful. What exactly is a Dark Honor Guard, anyway? They are the Sith, chosen from the most loyal and brutal shock troops to defend the Dark Council and the Emperor himself. You can find the Acolyte's father outside the chamber of the Dark Council. That's where he stands guard. I see. Well, Vet, we're going to be lugging this body round for a little while longer. We could go back to the Academy, but since we're just outside the tomb anyway, let's go search for this lightsaber.
And that's the second, two more to go. And that's the third, one more to go. All the hidden switches activated, and we can now proceed into the hidden chamber. Ooh, hello. If you're an Inquisitor, you have to do something similar. Activate some switches to gain access. No, no, you need to get some rods, don't you? And then gain access to this chamber. Hey, this is it. The secret entrance to the hidden cavern isn't here. Just let me get my bearings. Take your time, slave. Just have the entrance uncovered by the time I finish killing your new master. Can't say I'm surprised to see you, Vemrin. You're remarkably predictable. My passions run deeper than yours. I am the true essence of what it is to be Sith. My legacy has suffered long enough. After today, you will be forgotten. It ends here and now. Lady L. Fred, did you just take off half of his health? Yeah, that's... that does a lot of damage. Hm. Becoming Barriss' apprentice was my destiny. Did I come this far and overcome such adversity? Only to be proven unworthy? I have waited a long time to put you in your place. Consider this. Killing you was easy. Then do it. Finish me. Wow. Nice work. Just find the Forbidden Cavern. I already have. See? The secret entrance is right here. Bite that tongue of yours, slave. Consider it bitten. Uh, we have the shock collar and the device to use it for a reason. As long as she doesn't get too uppity. We'll, um, resist the temptation. That's a bonus defeat. Ain't ancient droids. Oh yeah, do we have a... No, we don't have a shield chance. 
even though we have the Cerezu form active. Interesting. I thought I'd check that out. Have a moment taking it all in. Lovely. The Entombed Warriors. But we now have our lightsaber. Let's let's try it out, shall we? They weren't so tough. Level 14. Now oh, we've learned a taunt ability. Forces a target to attack you for six seconds. Okay. Sure, we'll take that. And we've earned our first utility point. Which you can use to augment and improve a variety of skills. Getting attacked reduces the active cooldown of force charge by one second. That's pretty good. Sweeping slash does more damage, which is also very good. Hmm... I'll take this one. Okay. So now today is an optional mission to learn about item modification. It's pretty straightforward. Certain armors have slots to augment your... augment that armor. Improving it in a variety of different ways with a variety of different stats. So, let's uh, get ourselves back over to the Sith Academy.
There is an item modification table. I can't remember if these were ever used. I think they were meant to. And then Bioware kind of gave up on the idea. So you'd have to use these tables in the past to pop the item in and then modify it. But now you can just do it by whoops, control and right clicking. Oh well. So before we report our success to Darth Barris, let's go see this Naman Fal. The father of the Acolyte's corpse we found in the tomb of Nagasado. Apparently he's a member of well, the Honor Guard protecting the Dark Council. guessing he's a member of the Imperial Guard, which is these individuals here. Special troops to defend the Dark Council and the Sith Emperor. You don't belong here. You stand before the Chamber of the Dark Council, and this floor is off limits to all who are not Lords of the Sith. If you are not on official business, you will leave now. I've come with news about your son. So that is the smell you carry. It is said he went into the tomb of Naga Sadao to prove himself, and was killed. He was such a weak boy. He shames me in death as he shamed me in life. When I heard of his death, I could not leave my post. Honor forbade it. Still, I would like to know what happened in there. Tell me about what happens round here first. Must be pretty crazy. This is where the Dark Council meets. Where Sith politics play out. Where the Emperor issues his decrees. And where lives are destroyed with the flick of a wrist. Satisfied? Now tell me. Where did you find his body? Did my pathetic son even make it past the first steps? In the end, was he Sith? He died right at the entrance of the tomb. Pathetic indeed. Of course he did. Every moment of his life existed only to mock me. I will keep his bones to remind me of my shame and to focus my anger. But you have done me a service, and such deeds should be repaid. You have brought me pain and torment. I will return the favor. My son sought a relic I placed in the base of a cracked statue, deep in the tomb. This crystal will release it. Now go. How generous. Maybe we should have came back to the academy before seeking our lightsaber. Perhaps. Either way, let's go report our success to Darth Barris. You murderer! Oh, hi. My father was a staunch traditionalist and he was especially hard on me. But he's my blood. Did you think you could kill him and get away with it? Um uh... Uh, refresh my memory. Uh, I kill many people's fathers. You seek to add insult to injury? I'm Eskla Greiton. My father was Overseer Tremel. Remember killing him? Well, I don't know, but I am in possession of his ring. See? I'm going to rip that ring from your steaming corpse! I'm going to add your ring to the collection. You'll rue the day you took his life. Attack! Take some work. And Darth Barris just stood there and watched. He's a voyeur. He really is. 
I am beside myself. Told you. Not only did you get the Twi'lek to cooperate, but you completed the task and claimed the ancient lightsaber. Venran was not in my chamber as I instructed. I take it he sought to stop you and claim the ancient weapon as his own. He tried and failed. Venran was nothing if not consistent. Bravo. I see you may indeed become one of the strongest Sith in the galaxy. Your trials are over. You are now my apprentice. I am your humble servant, Master. I bow before you. Rise, my apprentice. This is only the beginning. With you as my right hand, we shall strike fear into the Empire's enemies. I must convene with the Emperor and inform him of your progress. This shuttle pass will take you to Drummond Koss. Meet me at the Citadel there. As you decree, my lord. Take the Twi'lek slave as my gift. Do with her as you wish. If she'll be of use, by all means, take her with you to Drummond Koss. And so we have Vet as our companion. Slave, basically. And we can customize her appearance if we so wish. Obviously, we get to choose from three customization options here. But there are other options uh, later that we can find and unlock. And we gained a little bit of influence with her. We probably would have gained more if she had approved of some of our conversation, but she doesn't appreciate us uh, bowing to Darth Barriss's authority. So, apart from the heroic missions that we we could do, we need to retrieve this relic that Nem and Fal give us um, the crystal for. And then we just need to leave. There is a shuttle that will take us to the Imperial Fleet, and then from the Imperial Fleet we can take a shuttle further onwards to... The, the Sith Empire's capital world of Drum and Cass. One thing to check. Is Darth Barris a member of the Dark Council? And he's entrusted to oversee negoti- Oh no, he was entrusted by the Emperor and the Dark Council to oversee the Treaty of Curason. Hmm. It doesn't say whether or not he is a member. Naga Sadao's tomb is a death trap. Tell the overseers we aren't ready. And Dyer's failures inside the academy. I'll take my chances with the other acolytes. It's every Sith for themselves down there. We barely made it out alive, and Chorus didn't make it out at all. Chorus was weak. Another acolyte crosses me. They'll get what they deserve. Fine, fine. Just wait until the med pack kicks in, all right? So we don't need to go too far back into the tomb. Just like I left it, this place is still ultra creepy. And it looks like someone's been ahead of us and started clearing the area out. I'll be taking this, thank you very much. It's a headband. Oh well, it gets us to level 15, that's fine. Let's get ourselves back to the Sith Academy. And then from there we can take the shuttle up to the Imperial Fleet. So we could use the Hollow Statue. But there is a class trainer on the Imperial Fleet, and I might as well see if there's any new skills we've unlocked once we uh, reach the fleet there. So yeah, we're level 15, which is reasonable.
And I say there is another Datacron just around there. The colour of the Datacrons used to correspond to what attribute they would uh, boost. Mastery used to be split into four different attributes. Let me try to remember what they are. Strength, willpower, cunning and aim? Depending on what uh, playable class. Strength was for warriors and knights, whereas willpower was for inquisitors and counsellors and so on and so forth. But now they're all bundled together into mastery. So there was some armour and some weapons which were only really suitable for certain classes, which is still true. Like, Imperial Agents, especially the Sniper Advanced class, is the only class that can use a sniper rifle. And the Smuggler, the Scoundrel, is the only one that can use a, a shotgun, a scattergun. But let us leave and get ourselves up to the Imperial Fleet. We will no doubt be returning to uh, Droman Cass at some point. Not Droman Cass, Korriban. <laughs> We're heading to Droman Cass now. I think I've been uh, recording for a bit too long this afternoon. May need to take a break. Let's get ourselves up to the fleet first of all. There we are. Gain some more experience once again, some influence. We even got a three hour experience booster. Very nice. And we get to choose some choose an outfit for Vet. And this is the armored outfit. It used to be that you would um like your character. You used to have to upgrade the gear that your companion would also have to wear. But now it's just purely for aesthetic reasons. So, um, tell you what. I would normally break the video here, but let's spend another 10 minutes or so exploring the Imperial Fleet. Vet wish, watch, wishes to have a word with us. We'll speak to her once we get to Drum and Cass. But yeah, we'll have a walk around the Imperial Fleet. I'll point out some of the major places we'll uh, be visiting every time we're here. And then we'll go from there. So, this is where you would normally choose your advanced class. There'd normally be a couple of NPCs to speak to. And they would talk about adva like learning and gaining advanced training on your path to being a bounty hunter are a member of the Imperial Intelligence and so on and so forth. And then they would guide you down to the combat training section. The fleet's made up of four major sections. Combat training, of course, is split then further into little cubby holes for each class. See so the Sith Warrior, Inquisitor, Bounty Hunter and Agent. And there's a fifth one for where there's an NPC if you wish to switch your discipline tree. So yeah, I think you normally talk to Lord Avor here to finalize your advanced class back in the day. Now he just stands there and rubs his hands together. Creepy. The force is a weapon. I will show you how to wield it. So we've learned Chilling Scream. Chills up to 8 enemies within 8 meters, dealing a, a tiny amount of elemental damage, but reduces their movement speed. Okay. And Heroic Moment. If you have, a co if you have an active companion, for 2 minutes every 3 seconds, you will restore 2% of your maximum health. Show no mercy. Which can be handy. I think there's a bunch of NPCs here that sell... No? Oh, wait, am I in the wrong place? Yeah, they sell some PvP items and weapons. 
we'll get ourselves over to the crew skills section. There are crafting skills and there are gathering skills. Both of which I don't really play with anymore. Uh, there's normally a terminal to learn about them. I may have missed it. But either way. We will take... You can have up to three skills. We'll take Archaeology. I may take Diplomacy. Maybe. Uh, slicing or Scavenging? I think we'll take Slicing. And yeah, I think we'll take Diplomacy as well. Diplomacy is good because I think... Do all of them now give you? Ah, they all give you light and dark side points now, depending on your alignment, which is the bar that was down here earlier, which I've turned off. But Diplomacy used to be the one that only gave you, like, more... Ah, it gives you influence now. Interesting. Did they all give you... No, they all give you influence. Hmm, interesting. Never really paid attention to that. But yeah, it used to be Diplomacy that was the only one that had missions for both light and dark side missions to send your companions on. So if you didn't think you were going to be getting a certain tier of the light or the dark side, you could use Diplomacy to uh, boost that um, alignment. Apart from that, there are some stronghold uh, items. Strongholds are basically like personal housing. We have the galactic trade market. We have the kiosks here if we want to buy anything or sell anything to other players. And as a way to uh, mostly narrow your search, if you so wish. And there's nothing I really want right now. There'll be times that we come and use this elevator here. This takes us to mission departures. There are what other games call dungeons in this game, but they're called flashpoints. And every so often we'll probably do a flashpoint and play with other players, which can go horribly wrong sometimes, especially since we're playing as a tank. But we'll see how it goes. And this is the supply section. Now this is important for us because we need to buy won't find a better bargain. A shield focus. An initiate shield. I think that's the one we need, yeah. Is there any better? I don't think there is. Let's have a look. There's a lot of a lot of armor you can wear. I've added a lot of customizable armor. Interesting. Nope, we need that focus. Where is it again? There we. So the generators. Ah, oh. oh, damage and healing gear. That doesn't have the shield generator. This does. Come back anytime. What equipment does it have on? Level 8 item modifications. We'll want to buy the level 14 modifications. I'll do that off camera. There's a variety of different ones giving you different stat boosts. Stay alive. I'll have a proper look through them to find the appropriate ones for my class to make me more effective. I'm gonna equip that shield generator at least. So now we have a shield chance of 20%. 5% from the shield, 15 for or Serezu lightsaber form. And we can boost that again using item modifications. 
And I say we can modify our armor all the way up to level 65. And then in the next two cubby holes, there are NPCs that will sell us level 70 armor. And there are t tier 1 to tier 4 armors we can purchase. But I think you need to purchase them using special commendations. And we haven't received any of those just yet. But this elevator will take us to the shuttle that will take us to Drum and Koss. And there are two options. Let's speak to the valet here and learn about them. As it should be. Okay. So yeah, there is a slower but safer shuttle that'll take us straight to Drum and Cass. Or we can board the Black Talon. A faster transport ship, but it goes through dangerous territory. And that is the first flashpoint a member of the Sith Empire will actually undergo, if they so wish. Um, the equivalent for the Republic is known as the Eslis. And we can't do that solo. We'll get a combat support droid to assist us in that flashpoint. We could do it with other players, but I'm happy, to, happy enough to do it by myself. I'll break this video here though, and when we come back, we'll do the Flashpoint, the Black Talon, and then be on our way to Drum and Cass. This of course has been Antwolf though, playing Star Wars The Old Republic as Curse here. I hope you've all enjoyed, feel free to comment if you so wish, and I'll see you for even more next time. Until then though, bye bye now.